class, Professor Smith here, excited to create a video on finding the vertex, focus, directrix, and axes of symmetry for a parabola. In this example, we're asked to find the vertex, focus, directrix, and axis of symmetry of the parabola, the quantity y plus 5 squared, equal to negative 5 times the quantity x minus 2. Here we see for the first time a parabola written in a different way. Uh, normally we usually have y equal to some function of x, but now we don't. We have an expression in y squared, and then we also have an expression in x on the other side. One thing we want to observe in this example, we notice that the y plus 5 quantity is squared. So now we have a function where y is squared, so we usually will refer to that as x, a function of y. And here the x is linear, and when I say linear, that means it's raised to the 1 power. And you say, wait a moment, I don't see a 1. Well, whenever we see a variable expression with no exponent, we know that we can express that variable, in this case x, to the 1 power, and x to the 1 power is the same as x. So we see that x is to the first power, therefore it's linear, and the y is squared. That's going to give us some information about our parabola. First, we're going to recognize that we can pick up the vertex by setting each of the arguments equal to zero. In other words, we can set the x minus 2 equal to zero, and then the y plus 5 equal to zero, and that'll help us find our vertex. And then the next step is to find p, and we know that the coefficient of the linear term is always going to equal 4p. So let's write out the general form for our two cases of parabolas when they're written in this form, because when they're written in this form we can determine the vertex, and from that we can find p, and that will help us find the focus and the directrix. So the first form is y minus k quantity squared equal to 4p times x minus h, and this one is going to represent our horizontal parabola. That means that the axis of symmetry is going to be horizontal, and if it's horizontal, then it's going to be parallel to the x-axis. So whenever we have the linear in x, then it's going to be parallel to the x-axis, and the x-axis is horizontal. In some books, you'll see the 4p times the quantity x minus h on the left-hand side. So you'll see it as 4p times x minus h equal to y minus k quantity squared. That's the case for the horizontal parabola. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like when we have a vertical parabola. Notice with our vertical parabola, the y is linear, and then the quantity x minus h is squared, therefore x is squared. So we know with the vertical parabola, it's going to be have an axis of symmetry that's parallel to the y-axis. And if you think about the y-axis, it's vertical. <laughs> as opposed to the x-axis, which is horizontal. Because our example has the x linear, we're going to go ahead and proceed with the problem. Using the formula, 4p times x minus h equal to y minus k quantity squared. In our particular case, our problem had the following. Minus 5 times the quantity x minus 2 equal to y plus 5 squared. And it's okay if you write it in the equivalent form, where we have y plus 5 quantity squared equal to minus 5 times x minus 2. Either way is okay. To find the vertex again, we're going to set the arguments equal to 0. So when you set x minus 2 equal to 0 and solve for x, we get x equal to 2. And when you set y plus 5 equal to 0, you get y equal to negative 5. And students quickly catch on that the x variable is going to be the opposite. Here we have a subtracted 2, so it's going to be a positive 2. And here for the y variable, we have an added 5, and so the y value is going to be a negative 5. And so that lets us know that the vertex is going to be 2, negative 5. Some students will write that h is 2 and k is negative 5. But I go straight from the fact that I solve for x, and I put x in for the x value, and minus 5 uh, for the y value. So now that we have the vertex, this next step is to solve for p. Well, we know that 4p is going to be the coefficient of the x term. So 4p will equal negative 5. 
So we're going to divide by 4 to solve for p, and we get negative 5 fours. And in order to find the focus, we will add p to the x term, or x component, of the vertex. And you say, well, why are you adding it to the x? Because the x was linear, and that's also going to help us with our axes of symmetry. So to find our focus, we're going to take our vertex, and in our particular case, our vertex was 2, negative 5. And we're going to add the p of negative 5 fourths to the x value. Adding a negative 5 fourths is equivalent to subtracting 5 fourths. And then what we'll do is we'll get a common denominator, so we'll multiply that 2 by 4 over 4. And so we'll have 8 fourths minus 5 fourths, which will give us 3 fourths. So the focus is 3 fourths negative 5. The next thing they ask us to find is the directrix. So the directrix is going to be opposite the focus. So I think it's helpful to have a picture. So I'd like to introduce a graph here. You can memorize and write out all the steps using formulas, but I think a visual and understanding what you're doing is so much more helpful. So let's go ahead and graph the vertex and the focus. So here I have an image of the coordinate axes. I have the vertex at 2, negative 5, and then the focus is at 3, 4, so it's a little bit before 1, and then down to negative 5. Remember from our video using Desmos, when we graphed a parabola and changed the p-value or the focus point, that we discovered that the focus, you can think of it as pulling the curve um, uh, toward the focus, so it's going to open to the left. Another reason why we know that is because p was equal to negative 5 fourths, and that means it's going to go to the left of the vertex. All right, it turns out the distance between the focus and the vertex is going to be the same as the distance between the vertex and the directrix. So it's going to be 5 fourths to the left for the focus, and then 5 fourths to the right for the directrix. So let's draw the directrix. When I take 5 fourths, which is the same as 1 and a fourth to the right, I'm going to add a 1 to the 2, that'll take me to 3 and a smidgen more. So I'm going to have this vertical line through x equal to, what did I say, 3 and a fourth, which can be written as 13 fourths. And notice here we have that same distance of 5 fourths to the right as we had 5 fourths to the left. What's really cool about when you draw the picture is you notice some really neat commonalities. x was linear, so we added p to the x value of the vertex, and the directrix is of the form x equal to. And the way we find the directrix, it's going to always equal the x value of your vertex minus p. So the x value of ours was 2 minus a negative 5 fourths, which is equal to 2 plus 5 fourths, getting a common denominator of 2, 8 over 4, and plus 5 over 4 gives us that 13 fourths. So I love that about the symmetry. So when x is linear, the directrix is going to be of the form x equal to. But if you draw the picture, I think it's easy to see as well. So we have that our directrix is x equal to 13 fourths. The last step they ask us to find is the axes of symmetry. And we said, now since it's a horizontal parabola, that means its axes of symmetry will be horizontal. So let's go ahead and draw that one and draw it, let's draw it in um, purple. So if it's a horizontal line and it goes through negative 5, then this is going to be the line y equal to negative 5. So we're using, again, the vertex to find that y value of that point. And just as we use the x value plus p and minus p to get the focus and the vertex. So our axis of symmetry, again, is y equal to negative 5. So let's go ahead and submit our answers on Alex. We'll check our work. 
and we got it correct. Let's do another so we can practice uh, feeling more comfortable with recognizing what type of parabola we have. So in this particular case, we have the y is squared and the x is linear. So that's very similar to the last example. So let's do one that's a little bit different. Perfect. Now we have a case where the x is squared and the y is linear. We'll first start off by uh, observing that the y is linear. And if the y is linear, then we know that we're going to have a vertical parabola. And this looks similar to what we've seen in the before, where we could have y as a function of x. We're going to begin first by finding the vertex. And so the vertex we're going to find by setting the arguments equal to 0. So we have x plus 3 equal to 0, so x is negative 3. And then we're going to set y plus 4 equal to 0, and we'll have negative 4. We know that 4p is always the coefficient of the linear term, so be careful. Sometimes that 7 might be on the squared term side, so you would multiply both sides by 1 7th. And therefore, 4p would not equal 7, but 1 7th. Next, we're going to divide both sides by 4, and we have p is equal to 7 fourths. Because the y is linear, we're going to add p to the y value of our vertex. So we're going to add 7 fourths to the y value, which in this particular case is negative 4. Getting a common denominator by multiplying by 4 over 4. So we have 7 minus 16 fourths. Excuse me, we have 7 minus 16, that quantity over 4, and that will give you a negative 9 fourths. Another way that I do this when I'm working with whole numbers and a fraction, to be honest with you, I don't multiply by 4 over 4. I just multiply negative 4 times 4, and I get negative 16, plus 7 gives me a negative 9. All right, so we have minus 9 fourths. So our focus is going to be same as the vertex, x value of negative 3, but the y value is going to change. It's minus 9 fourths. Uh, the next step is they want us to find the directrix. So when we find the directrix, just as we did before where we added to the y value to find the focus, we're going to do the same thing to find the directrix, except for now we're going to subtract. So we're going to subtract p, which was equal to 7 fourths, from the y value of the vertex. Our y value was negative 4, so we're going to have negative 4 minus 7 fourths. We're going to multiply negative 4 times 4 is negative 16 minus 7 is going to give us minus 23 fourths. And if you're more comfortable by multiplying by 4 over 4, you're welcome to do that. So you get negative 16 fourths minus 7, which gives you a negative 23 fourths. Now we have to ask ourselves, now what's the equation going to be? Is it going to be x equal to or y equal to? Well, remember in the last case, when x was linear, the directrix was of the form x equal to. So in our particular case, it's going to be y equal to negative 23 fourths. Again, when you draw a picture, you get a better visual, and you really feel like you're on target to make sure that you have this captured correctly. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So we'll go ahead and add an image from a nice little trusty dusty clip art. We'll go ahead and plot the vertex, which was negative 3, negative 4. And let's do that in black so we can be consistent with the last one. Our focus was negative 3, 9 fourths. So negative 3, 9 fourths is a little bit up. 9 fourths is like 8 fourths, which is 2. <laughs> All right, so negative about right about here. And let's do that one in purple for the focus. So negative 3, oops, I said focus, but it's the vertex. Let's fix that. So here's my vertex. Here's my focus. My focus. Get your focus right, sister. So it's minus 9 fourths, negative 4. And as we would expect, when we see that this coefficient is positive, we would assume that, hey, this is going to open upward. If you multiply by 1 seventh, you can see that that coefficient of the leading term is positive, so it's going to be a parabola that would open upward. So we would expect the focus to pull the curve upward. So our directrix is going to go in the other direction, and we had it here, y equal to negative 23 fourths. 
And I'm not going to draw it to scale. We just kind of want an idea, a rough idea. But 24 fourths would be negative 6. So it's a little bit not as high as negative 6. And so that's the equation of the directrix, y equal to negative 23 fourths. Axes of symmetry is the axis where the graph is symmetric. In other words, if we would fold this surface in half, where would that in half point have to be? Would it be right along the line, x equal to, and it's always going to be from the vertex, x equal to negative 3. Actually, it's also from the focus, too. Let me um, make sure that I changed the, made a little typo here. I made the correction. The x value is negative 3 and the y value is negative 9 fourths. So our axis of symmetry is going to go through the vertex and parallel to the y axis. So let's go ahead and draw that one in blue, and that's the line x equal to negative 3. Let's go ahead and fill in our answers. So we have that our vertex was given by negative 3, negative 4. The focus was negative 3 minus 9 fourths. The directrix was y equal to minus 23 fourths. And it's all right if you put the minus in front of the whole fraction or if you write it in the numerator, it's equivalent. And then our axis of symmetry was x equal to negative 3. We'll check our work. Woohoo! And we got it correct. You could also write the answer with the negative sign in front of the fraction. <laughs> I love it. I love it when I'm validated. So I hope this video on finding the vertex, focus, directrix, and axes of symmetry of a parabola has been helpful for you.